oxidized the salt uh, in a, by erupting under the lake. And I was pointed out to me that it has too much nitrogen and too much potassium. So it doesn't match a pretty good match. Sure. Um, yeah, I think we should we should probably move on to some of these products. But I, I just saw that recently that 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 particular soil in Utah is a pretty close match for. Just because it erupted the salt. Mm -hmm. I mean, any, any, in water. Okay, so um, a reminder: here's the schedule. We're starting the half hour in project, half an hour late. All the other sessions are half an hour late as well. So you can decide whether you want to switch. What the project is how you can help with this. You know, planning a settlement on Mars, um, or, or your or your chapter, or your university, or whatever. After this will be a half hour open discussion of um, families and children on Mars, and then at six thirty, um, anybody who wants can get together and chat over at the club level. I think um, you need it. Yeah, I need it. Yes, yes, it does conflict with political and some other things. Okay. So, uh, Joe, can you or somebody take notes on the board if needed? Okay, so, um, by the way, thank you for attending. I've seen a lot of people who have stayed the whole afternoon. Um, one of our plans was we would figure out what projects can be done that are on the critical path to building permanent settlements in space and Mars that what projects can be done by people who are not aerospace engineers, um, uh, people who are you know, mechanical, civil, electrical, uh, farmers, or don't consider themselves to have a special skill, but, but you know, are dedicated and, and you know, interested in, in doing the research, um, or just help editing and you know, writing web pages or drawing, whatever. So, so this half hour is input from you as to how you might feel like helping or suggestions for each other. Um, some time ago, I wrote up um, a list of possible projects that could be done by small groups, volunteers, students, um, whatever, as part of coursework. And here are some of them. Um, just to get you thinking, um, um, uh, uh, how to manufacture furniture. Um, uh, 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 do we want mattresses made of parachute cloth filled with corn husks? Well, <laughs> that's one way to make a mattress in situ. Um, but but you know, you, someone here has a better idea. So um, the second one, kitchen, equip kitchen equipment. Go through the Sears Roebuck, cat Roebuck catalog or some other you know, um, catalog aimed at independent farmers, back to earth you know, people live off the land, you know, the 1960s hippies. Identify the kitchen equipment that is very small um, that could be brought from Earth and, and what can be made on site. Um, um, uh, uh, the mobile home industry, the, the recreational vehicle industry, you know, is another good source. Um, build some inflatable structures. Let's buy some big sheets and weld them together. Um, uh, build a masonry structure. Maybe, maybe it's a scale model this big that can take pressure. We pressurize it. Maybe it's you know, a, a very realistic model made out of foam blocks. And, and you can see there's a long list there. Um, I saw one hand. Did you? Yeah. I was thinking on your kitchen equipment, if you look back historically at like when settlers moved out across this country to settle it, a lot of your household metal objects were made by the blacksmith. Have you thought about you're going to have steel there? Have you thought about producing rather than more refined implements? Producing just, you know, spoons and forks from the kitchen that are banged out on the anvil. Um, so the question is blacksmith producing spoons, forks, etc., banged Pretty out on an anvil. In that case, yeah. yeah. Sure.
carbon out processing for, for so much stuff where, where uh, strength is not critical and, uh, and weight is not critical. Uh, you're better off using that because it takes very little resources to process that. Okay. Um, let's go through very quickly, let everybody have a chance to talk, and try to turn and face the center of the room and project your voice so that everyone can hear. I, 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 I don't want to try to repeat everything you said, but, but you were talking about blacksmith, the iron carbonyl process. My personal suggestion is, can we automate some of that? Can we have you know, a robot arm that does the blacksmithing for us? Or we're going to be producing sheet metal. What kind of, what's the minimal equipment to cut custom shapes out of sheet metal? Um, um, we may, yeah, yeah bending breaker, um, uh, maybe a water jet or a laser. Yeah, okay, yeah, but, but, but think about what an average person in this room can do to contribute it, to this. Uh, for example, you could design um, uh, pieces of equipment cut out of sheet metal and we'll find a laser cutter to cut them and this can be a demonstration of general purpose manufacturing. And it can be done by somebody in the room. Yes, I address to everybody. Okay, I uh, associated with kitchen equipment. Um, food is a subject of my heart attack. Uh, I haven't seen any mention whatsoever of food preservation techniques. Uh, you're gonna be building your own stuff and you're either gonna yeah. have to uh, uh, like freeze the stuff uh, or dehydrate. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, let me, let me summarize. Food preparation might be uh, freeze drying, canning, drying, whatever. Um, are, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so would everybody in the room think about, would you like to experiment? Assume that you have a gas processing plant that has this big fan that sucks air in at very low pressure, and you cut the apples. You know, can, can we have an efficient way of cutting apples? You take the tray out and you lay it in front of the gas processing plant to suck the water in as it dries out. And you're in, you know, half a percent atmospheric pressure, so the, the water just boils right out of the apple. Except, except we don't have apples. Oh, okay, okay, good point. We don't have apples. Who we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to freeze dry strawberries. But, but getting back to apples, um, what's, the, what's the fastest way to get an apple bearing tree? You know, should we should we send apple seeds? Should we send should we send the little sprouts and the roots and graft them there? Did, 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 does anybody work on how to get apple trees producing fastest? Yeah, no, no. You'd have to take the the, the stem stock, the, lead, the 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 branch stock, and the root stock, but or the seeds. Discussions on the what kind of crop selections would be would be uh, pla in place and planted, like soybeans or high protein crops, peanuts, stuff like that. Yeah. What would your initial crops be for? Yeah. Yeah. Some of these of things to plant in what order? And it could be a tree group, it could be a, a group of uh, uh, grains and a group of fruit and legumes. In, in past years, we had refugees from biosphere to the enemy here today. So those people do. Those people went through a lot of these questions. Yeah, we do have um, the science director from biosphere to the second uh, round. Yeah. He's part of our first. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Is the, no, I wish you could. 
And is there somebody who, who wants to talk about something that they themselves might do? You know, even if you don't have time, something that you want to do if you have time. Yes. All right. Well, I've been contemplating the project for a couple of years now. And I may have a property to do it to build some uh, greenhouses for controlled environments, perhaps a closable environment. Uh, that I'm interested in doing monitoring the gases inside. I just had a question. Are you familiar with uh, something called C4, C4 plants? 
Uh, it, it sounds familiar. Yeah, right? it's, yeah. Uh, a lot of the plants that it. basically live in the desert, naturally form in the desert, succulents, cactus, all that stuff have a, have a, uh, a gene in them called C4. And there's C3 plants and C4 plants. And C3 plants are like 99.9% .9 of all plant life. The other, like 1%, uh, is these hardy plants. When you look around and see all these hardy plants, they have a certain gene in them that makes them hardy. And, you know, of course, with gene splicing and things, now they can add these genes to other kinds of plants and possibly, you know, create a pear that would grow in the desert, for example. Sure. So, so well, I'll look into it. C4, does, doesn't that mean that the difference is that they close up to lose, to, to lose, to lose less moisture. They, they close the stomata they close to... close the stomata, but they bring the CO2 in during the night and yeah, in the dark, the night. do some kind of uh, well, it's, work on From what I understand, once again, this is 15 years ago I was in college, or more, 20 years ago, but the, uh, it, it deals with the chemistry within the, within the, the, plant, the photosynthesis, that engine, the Kelvin cycle that keeps that, yeah. that, that the photosynthesis driving. Well, there's a different way. I mean, it's the same process, right. but there's it different. Mean at night. And yeah. well, I, I, I have a sort of about it. Like the C4 plants all look have kind of like their cells in a certain way, though, because they do different things with like CO2 concentration in the cells. So like they can build the stomata during the day. Sure, and that's yeah, the closest stomata. But anyway, it's a, it's a good thing to look into if you're planning on taking plants to Mars. C4 plants or, you know, C4 genes spliced into C3 plants. Now, now, now to counter that, we will have climate controlled greenhouses, so we can give... It, 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 it's it's this should be more terraform yeah. kind of so, stuff. For, for the initial base, it's a trade-off between the, how, do you give the plants the optimal conditions and, and what do you pay for that? It, it, it might be cheaper to have very low pressure and high CO2, and you can have a thinner greenhouse and, and cheaper greenhouse. Yeah, it's, it's a trade -off. One of the things you got to be why you use greenhouses. When I remember talking to those guys, biologists are all about interested in molecular, you know, re recombination, and they sort of said the greenhouses, we don't need you anymore. So us physicists went down there and said, gee, will you let us do things? And so they're, you know, we can probably get there in Kobo um, large fractions of, uh, of uh, or, or uh, uh, the greenhouse. Uh, capability there turned over to these Mars experiments. Like I said, we, we killed our tomatoes the first time. We put it in a greenhouse inside of our little boxes because we were overheating. The guys down there say essentially, you know, people aren't interested in greenhouses right now. And we're saying, well, you know, we people who want to go to Mars, we are. We said, yeah, you're like pioneer because if your crop fails, you die. You can't ship it in from California. So yeah. you know, Care about greenhouses much now because well they get white fly in them or something just close them down and have the stuff shipped in from California. But if there's only one colony on Mars, you've got to make it live. Yeah. And that's the other thing we said too. Climate control is not as easy as everybody's saying it is in the greenhouse because what we do in with the greenhouse formula issue is open them up. They get too hot and blow sure. the gas out. You cannot afford to do that. So we're going to have to have some sort of bag or something to catch food, or or an air conditioner. It, 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 yes. Chilled water. We're going to have to figure out. Yes. 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 Yeah, the so air conditioning yeah. might better be done by chilled water, you can chill at night, and running an air conditioner during the day, the old fashioned way to work. Also, you, you, you want to look at uh, filtering out the arrays that, that are not needed. Exactly. Um, I do, folks, it does have a couple more comments, and I want to hear from somebody who hasn't said anything yet. Yeah. So, but, but first, I'd like to follow up a little bit. My favorite plant is you have at least three separate. They're only loose to five. They could have different climates in them. And I would also be experimenting with uh, uh, glass coatings or glass pipes that reflect uh, wavelengths that, that bring a lot of heat in, but yet allow so much it's growing light to come in as possible to try to, to handle that a little bit. So, you know, it's a big experiment. And I'm, I'm, 
Okay. But you definitely see a special version. Okay, if there's somebody who has not said anything, that it, especially if you have a you know some expertise of your own that you really might want to try out. It's not related to uh Several potential uh, site so, 
So it's down. Yeah, it's down. Yeah. So, so if anybody wants to talk, who wants to work on a design a research center or a dynamic center, some what you might do there. Turn it off. Take that to the other end of Changing the subject a little bit. Just a little bit. So this is the only tool here that we're not going to be addressing. We can't do it with more. This is the small system. And the subject that you can say doesn't need to be in an isolated situation under potential deadly threat for a long period of time. And that everyone's just going to be lost. You've got to go to the same line. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this, there's a lot of dynamics here that you really need to see through, uh, even in terms of investment dollars. Uh, you know, you can only pay, you can only do the race plans and fix the shoes to do that. So a lot of you are talking about some of these people are there for 12 years by the time you can finish the place. And what do you do with, what about governance, what about problem resolution, what about, you know, violence? Um, Mental illness. I mean, there's all sorts of things here that I don't hear you talking about. Well, we, yes, we haven't talked about it in this forum because we're focused on the technical aspects of this particular forum. Um, we did have um, both the um, town college and the consultant board to do this on medical issues. We can't, a uh, psychologist with a job in large that um, basically addressed this issue of the psychology. And there are a lot of things we can do to help. Uh, first thing is screening. And hopefully screen out some of the people that are more, uh, have a greater tendency to suffer from some of these effects. Um, you can also not keep them in a tiny unit in camp for too long. So remind, labels right away, so you have more volume, larger volume. Design your settlement, means design your settlement to be large. Uh, if you look at the square footage, the number of people they walk. And that's done on purpose because it turns out that the amount of extra energy and time and have it takes to build a little bit larger comfort zone as opposed to a smaller zone. It's a small incremental piece. And so you want large spaces, large common areas, long sight lines, colors and, and lighting to be very important for the temples a lot of them. Um, and we incorporated wherever we can green space. So we've got this first tree, which is both very symbolic and now it will serve a psychological uh, uh, benefit, you know, psychological benefit. Also, we've got you know, water culture and bamboo growing areas. We've got uh, green space virtually in every module. Maybe not in the, in the you know, hardcore manufacturing area, but pretty much everywhere else, there's little, little gardens and little green areas. So there are ways that we can mitigate some of these problems. Now, I imagine people will, there will be some people that they crack. Um, and hopefully we can pick up on this before it happens and it drives you over and do. But, um, you know, yes, this is something that needs to be looked at and we have someone on board that is with us. Um, a, a couple of issues. Um, one, this is not a short-term mission. You're not selecting astronauts. It's not like selecting uh, military crew members who go on a, on, on a 90 day rotation. It's really people who are going to change, who are going to settle. They're going to move to a new environment and they're planning to spend the rest of their life there. Uh, it, 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 probably two thirds of the crew members will plan to, plan to emigrate and stay there permanently, and maybe a quarter to a third will plan to come back. But they may change their mind. We may have different people. So, so, so that's why it's important to provide the capability for some people to come back. If they decide, this is not for me. Yeah, and the attitude. But also, uh, Robert Zucker talks a lot about how people will really be um, energized by coming to a new world and feeling like what they're doing has a lot of energy. Um, you know, that they are the builder of the world, they're not just an attitude. And I think that's, that's very true. Okay. Um, we have had our half hour in this. There's a question, there's a comment up here, and then here, and then maybe, maybe a couple more. Yes? I have some experience in manufacturing process, uh, I specific in a fire glass spray up. I was working in Mexico in a very cold place, and the process requires special conditions. How I can send my work 
and do my uh, small uh, contribution. So, so how can you contribute your work on, on coal? How I can send the work? Your coal in private manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Frank, to me, to, to that address. Uh, Mars Homestead, info at marshome.org. Okay. Uh, email there is, 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 is sent to three different people and it's archived. Um, and uh, www.marshome.org. Um, I can give you my business card and phone number, CSF. And remember the 630 uh, casual meeting. Thank you so much. Um, no, wait, wait, no, oh, I didn't mention we have a general discussion email list that anybody can join and contribute to, and then and then each of these teams will have their own little email list and archive. We have a very extensive um, website with a lot of um, some professional papers and, and and other information on it. We we call it doc tree, document tree. Um, and, and we can set up other stuff. Um, and, and we do need help with the website. We need help editing. Um, even if you don't do the original work, maybe you can help us edit it. Um, CAD animation, um, uh, calling up companies that, that might sponsors. So you had a comment, and then we'll take a couple more. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just have a question. I've been to Mars on Battle, and there's a picture of the structure. It looks like a fork, remember? The, the right. Yes. Yeah. What is that? Okay. Um, a long time ago, I came up with the concept of the masonry vaults with with liners and and regular holding it down. And I wrote that up and I presented it to the Case for Mars conference. Um, those proceedings, the proceedings of that were given by somebody that Kim Stanley Robbins and he read them cover to cover, forgot everything in them. Two years later, he wrote Red Mars. Then looked then. Green Mars and Blue Mars, and, 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 and you know he didn't he didn't have the references, but about but half the technology that you see in Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars came from those early conference proceedings. Uh, he called that underhill. It's it's a row of vaults against each other, and then a pressure door and another row, another row to make a square. And um, my design was just you know the four pressure uh, pressure zones. Um, and then Kim extended it and said, okay, after the technology is better and get better materials, they'll go back and hollow it out in the middle and make a courtyard with a, with a dome. So, so that's Underhill, uh, rendered by uh, Rich Malanday, who's also a volunteer in uh, Maryland. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say, is there anything like the, uh, the, the, the image where you have a, a pyramid that you can see six-story masonry structure. It'd be the size of an apartment building. You have a great big atrium on one side. You have private gardens on the other side. The top two floors would be private condominiums. The middle floors would be offices and labs and, and shopping and, and open, you, you, cut, you know, municipal space. And then the bottom two floors would be um, light manufacturing um, and windows on one side. And, if it, and, and then another version has it all centered around a town square. If anybody would like to help draw those up or critique them or build models, um, you see that for the I mean, I think there's one section where something might, might be considered uh, looking out psychologically on our body likes to see blue and green. Yeah. When, we, when we look at a place that we think about living there, we don't, we don't feel natural when we look at mostly the sea brown. Well, I, 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 I'm from New England. I came to Colorado this week. So. That's I, part of the reason why we have um, the green spaces in front of the windows here. So when you go through this canopy, you've got these large family growing areas. So it's, it's like you're in a park. But that's not what I was talking sure. about. The one place that, that he didn't have said. I mean, that, I, so I, I think that should, would be nice as an option. This other one that we were just talking about yeah. would be another uh, nice option too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's, 
Okay, um, I, I, on that note, seeing blue and green, um, uh, is there somebody in the room who would like to um, take some of these drawings and watercolor them in different colors? You know, you know, you, 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 you take somebody else's design and just, just experiment with different colors and come up with three or four different color schemes. And we'll put them on the web and let people give an input. That, that, that's an area that, that many people might enjoy doing. Um, I comment up here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good that you want to see offer projects, but are there any things? I mean, I don't have any skills. I'm still in high school. But um, you do have skills. Well, yeah, okay. Are there any things that you need to just manual, or just volunteer work to do that, that we can do? Um, so, so any any volunteer work for for in, in this case high school? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. 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 We do. Um, um, it, it depends on your location and your interests and your skills and whatnot. But from anywhere in the world, if you have a computer and you can type English, um, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately we're, 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 we're stuck in English, at least this group is. Um, 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 uh, you can do some editing. Um, uh, you can um, participate in the email discussion groups. You could um, extract key information from those discussion groups and catalog it everybody else. One, one example of uh, something I'm looking for some people to work on is, uh, as you mentioned, we have this online document repository where we, we assemble uh, a whole structure that is, we call it the work breakdown structure, but it basically organizes all the different elements that we have to deal with and make the cell that into some kind of logical order. And we are in the process of, one, doing this with um, items that are technology development items that we've identified. Um, so I need help, you know, identifying different areas that need study. Another thing that we're doing in this the system is we're filling it with um, the patchwork papers, uh, presentations, and um, I have right now about four gigabytes of files sitting on my hard drive that I haven't had time to sort of so um, that's something else that would be very valuable. Do you have this structure on the internet? It's yes. on the internet. You can watch on the word. There is a document library thing. It's called Document Tree. And uh, it might be a good thing now. Okay. Uh, so, so to follow up, um, yeah. hey, another yeah. thing is good. Would you like to start an, an internet discussion group of people, um, like, uh, for students, people under 22? Uh, or um, would you like to make models? Would you like to, to, to do painting? Um, we're not really writing software to, to control the, the mining manufacturing yet, but we do need to specify that software. There's a lot of web development work. An awful lot of web development work, yeah. So, um, uh, the one thing we might do is offer kind of an online course taught by a volunteer teaching some skill. And you can think of a skill that you want to learn online, and then we'll, 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 we'll look around and try to find somebody who might teach it. So, okay, um, unless there's a burning, you know, comment or volunteer. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. the comment is plant trees. Yes, yes, I agree with that too. Different species of that. Yeah. Um, okay, I so. That's, a, that's a, something at our outreach and research center. We plan to have a, an interactive exhibit that talks about the first tree and where people coming through the center give their input what they think the first tree should be. So, okay. So, first growth. For, I'm sorry, first so, growth of trees. So, so let me close up this session. Um, it, 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 there are two sign-up lists somewhere in the room. Um, does anybody put okay, up, up there? Please make sure your name and address, email address, and phone number is on it. If you have a special interest or, or skill or something that you'd like to do, add it down or, or just hand it to one of us. Come at 6.30 over in the club level if you want to just chat. Um, and we're going on to the final um, thing, the final half hour. Um, Okay, my name is Bruce McKenzie, if you haven't learned that by now. And several years ago, I, um, I, I do something at every Mars Society conference, and sometimes they're different topics, but I, but I, I like to lead the discussion group. And um, one of the 
I, I, I always kept getting questions. When will the first child be born on Mars? When will the first people get married? When will, you know, things like this. And no matter what I present, someone always asks that question. So I decided to devote a half hour to it. And the audience loved it. And I've been doing it ever since. So the topic is the first families in space or the first child on Mars, you know, whatever. And um, I'm going to throw up bullet items for discussion. And then if anybody can respond and again face the middle of the room and try to project your voice. Yes. So, um, by the way, there's my email address and phone. I can give you a business card. So the outline for for this topic is. Um, what? Oh yes. Uh, and so so, so there's, there's a girl who's doing doing a, a, a somersault in very low gravity and zero gravity. Um, um, topics are why have children or, and, and, and reasons not to have children, what's important to be that what's important to be provided from birth, what family model, you know, you know, a parent and two kids, um, a nuclear family, Joe's our nuclear engineer, he knows all about that. Um, minimum number of adults before you start having kids in the community, what equipment, supplies, costs, um, the ethics, is it is it unethical to have children in, in an unsafe or in an unknown environment. And the the effects of the children on each other, on their parents, on the other adults, and the effects of having children on Mars, the effects on society on Earth, to look up in the sky and say, hey, there's two kids named Johnny and Susie on that red dot. So, baby jumpers, uh, you got lower gravity, um, <laughs> it may take flying leaps. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you're going to need different size space suits, um, and the kids will grow up with a different, different experience. You know, they, they, they will have they have a different personality based on their childhood experiences. The games, the games yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and 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 I'm thinking primarily of the first few kids, the first one, two, the first ten kids. Uh, but 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 you can comment on anything. So I made a list of topics related to the reasons that you would have children on Mars. One is, obviously, it's human destiny. Um, it's traditional. It's traditional, yeah. Where you have adults, you tend to have kids. Yes. Um, it would emphasize that this settlement is permanent. The kids are expected to stay. Just assume the kids will stay there. It, you know, uh, demonstrate partial self-sufficiency. Life vote for humanity. This means if if we have a community on Mars or somewhere in space and something really bad happens on Earth, civilization will continue. Um, the benefits to adults, um, uh, some adults really like being in a teacher role. Um, it, uh, you may have trouble recruiting a crew if they are unable to have children. Um, uh, it gives people a purpose in life. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I'll use a laser pointer instead of the, the mouse. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, reasons for children on Mars. It's interesting for children on Earth, as I mentioned. That, um, it might actually be cheaper to grow children on Mars than to bring them from Earth. <laughs> okay. I love the Yeah, yeah, well, in, in, in situ resource utilization. <laughs> Okay, I, I haven't done the cost trade-off, but, you know, maybe. There have been science fiction stories about sending embryos to other stars. So, so I, I, I'm going to talk about the bullet I, I'm going to describe the bullet eyes, then I'll open it up. Um, maybe uh, people will pay a lot of money if they can have kids on Mars, or if they can send their embryos to Mars, maybe. Um, children may adapt better to Martian conditions than adults, especially the gravity. Um, reasons for kids is kids happen. Um, there may be deliberate but unauthorized pregnancies, you know, unauthorized by the, the people who think they're in control we have the, on Earth. And the final reason to have kids on Mars, it's an interesting topic for discussion at conferences. Okay, open to the discussion. Face the center of the room. Uh, you first. Okay, well, obviously, if we're going to have. Okay, and because of the mission Mars is going to be so small. Parents are going to want to have their children be capable of returning to Earth if they so choose in their adult lives. But apparently, if we grow kids in the, in the, the less finished gravity, they, their bone development might not be you know, 
was sufficient for them to have a return verdict, no matter how much training they had. So, if, it, if, if we have enough infrastructure, could we theoretically have a, a train going on a big, you know, a slanted circle to provide for flight gravity? Um, I, I guess you could. It would be expensive. So, to summarize, if the kids grow up, at three days gravity, they may be unable to survive Earth gravity without training or acclimatization or, you know, you know, you know maybe every child has to have a one hour gym class all their life in Earth gravity. It would be expensive. Well, I, you know, I would respond to that too. Um, I personally believe that you probably will have like, uh, even some work on Mars and you will come back to the Earth. Um, it's quite possible if you have slowly transition these kids from Martian gravity back to Earth. Oh, well, along the course of the Earth level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can do that for muscle development, but maybe not for bone density. Uh, not slow, not slow density, but the actual way to develop in your childhood. I said you need to run the experiment. So it's pretty much designed a grid to address this problem, and it spins. Um, okay, okay, so on Earth, we put the babies in the baby jumpers so we can use their legs before they can hold their own weight. On Mars, bungee cords will pull down. So, another comment? Yes, I have one. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking of the Truman Show. Move the Truman Show. But this kid, kid has an entertainment device with raised an isolated community, and he grew up on TV, and the whole world was watching. I'm thinking that, you know, the Discovery Channel has done something here. I would think that everybody on Earth would be watching this kid in the community. It would be constant support and a community source of funding. The yeah. sun and a life experience. For the vast majority of humanity, you never do it. Sure. If you think about the initial group of settlers that go to Mars, um, I think you've got to be real careful because they're all going to want to be the ones that have the first child born on Mars. This could be a real problem. Well, we see these uh, these survival race programs and a lot of interest. I mean, uh, you have a real fight to get there. I, I, by the way, there was uh, a race as to which country could have the first child, child born in Argentina, uh, in Chile and Argentina. I'm sorry, in Antarctica. In Chile and, and Argentina both wanted to, to be able to prove their claim to the continent by, by having kids born there. They, 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 they basically sent in pregnant women. I, think so. I, I never knew the final outcome. Um, so other comments? Um, there are reasons to have kids on Mars. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> one problem with these horses is Yeah, go ahead. Is that one problem was dealing with the, the uh, medical requirements that uh, the dogs that were, you know, we, you know, in the old days, this is what we did, it, but now in the days, that's not part of the yeah. Yeah. yeah, part of that is, is in the old days, we, we, women in society accepted the risks, and nowadays we don't accept the risks, but unless you're prepared for cesarean sections or not. Um, we're getting into the negative reasons, so let me advance. <laughs> um, um, let's see. In, anyway, a mood shot, I wanted to go to that. Reasons not to have kids. Um, and, and we'll flip back and forth between reasons for and not. Um, reasons not to have kids, it takes a lot of parents' time, expensive supplies, uh, food, air, water, um, teachers, safety, it, it looks bad if there's an accident and the, and the kids die. It would look really bad if they ran out of something and they knew everybody was going to die in 30 days and there were kids involved. I mean, I mean it'd be bad enough with adults, but that would really put a damper on the, on the good press. Medical problems, um, radiation, and that back. But rebellious teenagers who know how to open the airlock. Um, and is it is it ethical to have a child. <laughs> so, 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 is it ethical to have a child where the child doesn't have a choice as what man do with all um, Yeah. <laughs> so a choice. Okay, okay, okay. Joe says it's unethical to use one on earth. Okay. Um, 
and independence of the second generation. Why should birds support the base, you know, will the second generation have a you know, connection with Earth? So, so comments on anything, reasons for or against kids? Yes? I have one for, for, for Once we have self-sufficiency and we have self-governance, I don't think Earth is going to want to give us political freedom very easily. So if they ever sleep, the Earth government has ever stopped you know, the flow of humans to Mars militarily. We're going to have to, you know, if we're trying to have a permanent settlement, we're going to have to have, you know, future colonists and eventually soldiers for evolution. Okay. Um, yeah, well, sure, Pat. Hey, you. Yeah. We, uh, I forget the okay. name. Right. Uh, right. Without the kind of definition of um, self sufficiency, it was actually being able to have a population that would grow pretty much on its own. And so I would think once you have the first kids, you, you want to have more and, and eventually build up the infrastructure so that you can build the population up to the fair capacity of Mars or those matters. This is a kind of a related question to you, but since you're, you guys are studying you know, the kind of infrastructure and the settlement of the do you have any uh, kind of disrupt ballpark ideas of the fair capacity? Yeah, yeah, carrying capacity of, of Mars. Um, I've thought about that. Um, it's certainly smaller than Earth. Um, the, the, the land area of Mars and the land, the dry land area of Earth are about the same. But Mars has a lot less available water, less sunlight, and it doesn't have a lot of the energy sources. It doesn't have um, fossil fuels, as far as we know. And it may not have easy sources of, of uranium for, for uh, um, it certainly has, has hydrogen and deuterium. So Mars may be dependent on Earth for, um, for nuclear fuel for a long time. But that's a fairly cheap import. Um, so, so I would say the carrying capacity of Mars, depending on technology, might be one-tenth that of Earth. And it's primarily limited by water and, and resources. But, but one-tenth of that of Earth is still a billion people or so. <laughs> so, um, Joe? Yeah, I'm just saying, um, another reason to have these on Mars is that uh, the settlers on Mars will, will need to innovate. There's going to be a need for a lot of innovation. And children think about problems in a different way than adults who are set in their wings. And this is the way it's always been. This is the way it has to be. Children aren't locked in that way. So it's going to be important to bring that perspective to this new problem. Okay, since they have the amplification, I will not grab the, the floor. Um, I, I forgot to add, even the, the carrying capacity of Earth might be 10 billion, maybe more depending on technology. Mars might be a billion. But Jerry O'Neill's freshman physics folks estimated the carrying capacity of the asteroid belt is, I think, 3,000 times that of the Earth. That, that, that you have, you, when you rebuild millions of settlements from the asteroid material, the total land area would be thousand times that of the Earth's land area. Actually, John Willis, sir. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and um, so, so the carrying capacity of the asteroids at space settlements is on the order of 10 to 30 trillion people. And that is just mind-boggling. And, and, and that's where the future of humanity and future of life might be. So Mars, Mars, Mars is a beautiful place to, to do the support to initiate the development. Right. Yeah. So, so, so to paraphrase what you said is um, we don't have the technology and the, 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 the vision and the, and, and, and the political will to go straight to the asteroids. And Mars is a good place to try out the technology. Uh, yeah. so, so you were next. I, I, I'm trying to take people in order, um, starting from this side and going to there, but, but you were right. Okay, I'll agree. I was just saying that uh, this isn't a reason for raising children on Mars, per se, so much of this is it a reason for conceiving children on Mars, but with a three-eighths of the gravity of Earth, I think that conceiving children on that planet would be pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I right? Am I right? Yeah. 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 So, so, so you're talking about the act of conceiving children might be, I would say, <laughs> interesting in low gravity. So and, and there have been there have been um, at, at least one married couple in orbit. I understand they were assigned to different shifts, so they can have any privacy. Um, anyway, 
So, so I'm going to go from this side. Well, I think a fact that I've never seen discussed about this, uh, in fact, a lot of literature about it, but uh, the uh, factor of genetic drift, you know, here you've got all these really high, high IQ people, extremely healthy people, selected from an entire planetary population. Now, they're going to make a right angle change in uh, whatever humanity comes out of the remote area. It's an experiment you couldn't do on Earth because you can get some Okay, okay, so, so to paraphrase, it's a social and genetic experiment. And, and, and we have had that on Earth. Um, um, whenever you have a very small population, they, they, they can tend to really accentuate genetic uh, changes. Yeah. Um, up behind the camera, um, hello. Okay. The camera. Hello. Um, he kind of stole a little bit of my question, but still, um, because of the gravity on Mars, wouldn't you wouldn't the people be a lot taller because there's not so much gravity pushing down at them? So they'd have like longer skulls and arms and yeah, yeah, yeah. Would people who developed as children and infants on Mars be, be taller or, or different proportion? Um, I don't know. We can certainly raise run experiments with 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 higher gravity. We, we you know we we can, we can grow animals in centrifuges on Earth and see what that effect is. Yeah. Um, People have speculated on that. I don't know that there's been any scientific study. I, I think they, they can come out with some stuff that would say that with, without the stimulus, bones don't go as far as the best. Uh, so does that gravity so so won't necessarily be covered. Right. It's not just the gravity, it's also so much for you. Yes, and then, um, um, yeah. um, the astronauts is very much like that. Mm -hmm. It does work. Um, apparently, when, you're, when you walk and your heel hits, it shocks your whole leg, and that vibration um, in, um, leads to more bone growth. And, 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 and people who are injured where they can't walk, or they can only walk on their toes, or they swim, they don't get the, the bone strength. So, okay, so I'm trying to go in this order. Anyone in this area? Okay. Yes, yellow shirt, Michigan. I, no, 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 no. That proposal was to use asteroids as raw materials, get rid of most of the asteroids, feed them into a steel mill, and produce giant space cities a kilometer across, spinning. The L5, the, the, the L5 colonies, the Stanford Taurus, Bernal spheres. Yeah, um, I, I, I go to SSI.org, and they have a nice set of slides. So. Um, Take any number of correspondence courses that have tutors back on Earth. 
Um, and they will have some incredibly good role models, and I hope they will. Um, any other comments related to teaching? Yeah. I was going to say that um, perhaps a better question is not should we or will we have um, children on Mars, but when is it perfect? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Following on what you just said, I think that's crucial. I think it, it, it of course makes sense that if we, if we do and when we do find a colonized Mars, we will have children. But when is a big deal. I, I, just to put this in perspective, you mentioned the Pearl Bay. There's a whole lot more people there than we've been in the dozen. And they have huge support compared to what these people are going to have. They have huge technology available, much more energy, everything. If we were to announce tomorrow that you know a dozen people were going to go there and start to raise, start to have babies and raise those babies, where those babies would not be allowed to return, and they would basically, you know, space to develop and everything else, those babies could develop largely in a confined space, beautiful, nice colors, big tree. Um, you know, I think we would all see that as fundamentally moral that we were doing that to those 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 individuals who didn't choose to go there. Well, let me ask you a question. Now, ultimately, some point I'm not saying it can't happen, yeah. but when is really really important, and it's not a dust. Well, so let, me, let me ask you a question. Um, did the children of that were born to pioneers in this country? First pioneers, did they have a choice in coming into this, this wild frontier or of, of being born and, and raised in, uh, in civilized Europe? I don't think they were given the choice. And I don't think they view that as as that, being, that speaks you know, back to your when. When 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 the colonists on Mars had even one percent of the freedom that the colonists in North America had. By all means, go ahead and co-create a By freedom, freedom, you mean freedom of, of Freedom of movement, freedom of energy, freedom of choice, freedom of career, freedom of, of also. When you, when you think of the difference between being a child in North America, even in 17th century, you're on a scale completely. These people, these, these children, at least at this stage that we're talking about with the current plan, would not be able to leave. There would be no spacesuit that would allow them to go outside. They would be, this would be their, their world. I, that's I, a think, I think you would have, you would have scaled down right there, there's, they, they, they could go there's out. a space suit. And, and I you think that- You don't need for the- like Remember, Mars. you're thinking, you're thinking that this is a, just a confined space, it's like you can, you put people in, and you never leave. They've got an entire planet to explore. Now, talk sure. about psychological issues. I think it's going to be required that um, at least once or twice a year, you've got to get in one of these long-range rovers and go up over the horizon and explore a little bit. I'm talking the when then. That's wonderful. When that yeah. stuff is possible, that makes more sense. Right. But that's a long way from the dust. I think it's way Okay, guys, okay, guys, guys, you want it. So guys, guys, let me, let me interrupt. There is a valid question of when. This is a different presentation from the homestead. The homestead is 12 people and then another 12. This is a question of when to have the first kids. And it might be 24 adults, it might be 100, it might be 1,000. How many were on the Mayflower? Uh, there were 90 passengers on Mayflower. Mayflower, it was 90 feet long. That's how I remember it. <laughs> okay, um, let me go to Peter Cook, and then I'm going to the next slide. Uh, the idea of postponing having children until we know that it's safe is stupid because the only way we can know it's safe is when the second generation turns out fertile and healthy. The only way to get that point is to take the plunge. So the longer we delay, the longer we, we do not know. And at some point, the plunge has to be taken. All through history, families have uprooted pioneer new territory. Sometimes just individual families, two people, and they had kids. That kid had no choice and grew up fine. It's not about kids having choices. They will grow up fine. It's about parents having choices. I agree with you. You know, do, do you want to tell a, a husband and wife they go to Mars and decide they want to, they want to 
live their lives there, that they are not allowed to have children. I don't think that we have a right to say that. No, I, but I don't think they should have children until they've demonstrated that it can produce almost everything that they're going to need so that it's possible, they've demonstrated it's possible to set up a permanent and set up that responsibility. Because yeah. their, their children uh, may not be able to come back to Earth either. I don't think they should, but uh, it's going to Okay, last comment in the orange shirt, and then I'm going to... Yeah, I agree with this But, like, and I disagree that, that um, we should take the one forever. Um, because, and, and I keep hearing references back to other people who do pioneers um, past. This is not a black past. These people are basically living in camp, whether you want to say that or not. And they go on these long trips, um, should they can explore. Uh, to basically big red planes with red rocks everywhere. But I mean, seriously, like, we don't know anything about the psychological, the psychological effects it's going to have. I mean, on adults, it's different. When you're, when you're dealing with pre, like, with uh, children, like, we, we have no, no idea what kind of psychological effects it's going to have. And I think that unless we have a big enough colonization or um, colony, that they will have, like, at least some kind of uh, freedom and some kind of community there other than like 30, 30 adults that it's not even uh, a question. Okay, um, let me grab the floor. I've got three more slides with bullet items and let's go through them and try to finish um, in, in maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, we, we hinted on this next slide a little bit. How many adults, um, you know, um, the family, the family models. Um, for much of human history, um, the, uh, children were raised by a tribe, you know, an extended family. So um, what are good family models for first Mars base or base anywhere in space? Um, the, there's a the nuclear family that, um, you know, that, that, that's the American, the North American tradition now, but it's really unusual in, in other cultures or older cultures. Um, but for most of humanities, um, we had an extended family where there were lots of aunts and uncles in the same tribe. Children tended to join a play group at around age four or so. Um, and they were really raised by, by all the adults within the tribe or the village. Um, another, role mo another model is a single adult raising kids. Um, there may be unbalanced gender ratios, more men than women or, or more women than men that has some issues. Uh, there have been some experiments with group marriages. Um, uh, um, okay, surrogate parents, aunts and uncles, would you, hey, what's this guy's name, Mr. Mr. Smith? Would, would you want this, this evil guy who tries to sabotage the mission, you know, being an, an uncle figure to your children? Um, but, but, but usually, you know, adults, you know, play, play good role models for kids. Um, expecting older children to help, um, growing food, household work, um, the, the teenagers helping raise the, the, the toddlers. Uh, grandparents, a lot of people love being grandparents by the time they're that age. They're semi-retired, they may have difficulty with other, other work. Um, so, any comments on, on what I just said and address the center of the group? Yes? Well, I think that the seems to be careful studies. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal maybe five years ago talking about this really expensive village, a small town in Oregon. really didn't have much of a population, but it produced more of a lot of money per capita than any other community in the world. I did not think so. It's extremely modern and has a lot of money for the Frank, I'm going to go across. Frank, I think if we look at Chris Dan Robinson's books, we see all of the above. <laughs> and yeah. it happens in uh, maybe different locations, but it'll all be traveling. Being black? Yes. Thank you. I think um, this is uh, all these contradictory questions that we have is because we are in Earth. The people who are going to be in Mars are going to start from the beginning, from the scratch. The only people who is going to suffer is the people who is coming from the Earth to Mars. In this level, they are going to start father and mother, and I think all these people is going to be very strong the links, is, they are going to be like a team because how they work is how they are going to survive. Then they are going to be the uncles, 
the grandfather, the grandmother, they are going to be together. Maybe they are going to be the evolution of the second generation of humans. And maybe it's going to be fun for them come to the earth for vacation and see that we are a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> They might have a very in interesting impression of our movies. Why are all these people on the street? Yes. What's this thing called? Trafficking, car? LA. Or a car. Yeah. Um, in the center? Yeah. Well, I, for one, am highly ambivalent on the issue of raising children on Mars. It's a very uh, complicated prospect. Like, on one hand, it strikes me as rather unethical because all the people of the older generation of society will be astronauts. The most, like, you know, black, brain, hard-working people on the planet. We will pretty much be raising an army of extremely hard-working, you know, academically competent, socially stunted, awkward, miserable people. And that strikes me. As <laughs> <laughs> it would be like this convention, like times three. So it's like people at this conference. And, uh, yeah. exactly. and I could not really look at myself in the morning knowing that I was partially responsible for raising an entire race like that. But on the other hand, it's like three eighths gravity plus polygamy. That's like the awesome thing. No, well. <laughs> so it's a very complex issue. And um, I just would like to say the fact that I'm really struggling to get my own. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 by the way, I've done this four or five times now. So <laughs> you know, it's great for me every time to, to hear the comments. They vary slightly each time. But, but to address one of your points, um, you may not want to have a single child because there's a lot of social um, interaction between children. You might want to have a minimum of two, three, or four children. There, there have been cases of like um, um, uh, um, lighthouses. You know, you know, you know, a lighthouse is on an island, and there's a family. You know, the lighthouse keeper and, and spouse, and they raise one or two or three kids. And those kids, when they when they take their, their once a month trip to the mainland, they, you know, like it's culture shock. Right. So. Okay, um, yes? Um, I think a lot of people are underestimating the adaptability of human beings. I think children tend to be much more adaptable than adults. If adults are able to adapt to this kind of environment, children growing up in it, yeah. we're going to take it as that's just the norm. I also think that you know, the concern about the lethality, potential lethality or risk, I mean, there are a lot of places we live on this planet now that without fairly sophisticated intervention. You know, I think of uh, uh, northern peoples, you know, above the Arctic Circle and stuff. You don't go out there naked. You die. And people have been raising children up there for tens of thousands of years. And we are pretty quick to put your children outside naked. Make sure they're clothed. I mean, I don't think it's going to be any different here uh, you know, with the marsh and stuff. And, and I think you know, human beings are going to be able to adapt. And I, and I agree, I think all these things are going to be tried. Yeah, so uh, um, my personal feeling is that the um, uh, that it, there's actually less technology needed for us to go to Mars than there was for people to leave, you know, you know an equatorial area you know, 100,000 years ago and settle in northern climate. It, it, at least it's easier for us technologically than it was for them. The first invention of clothing, etc. Yes. Okay. Um, people born in countries like in very third world countries are born into the horrible circumstances where and most of them stay in those circumstances for their entire lives. Is it unethical for people in those countries to not to, to have kids? So and, and, and in the same way, people who are in a permanent settlement on Mars are gonna be are, are gonna be there, you know, for their entire lives. So I, I think you could extend that reasoning. Given I mean as long as the colony is not like 30 people, as long as it's over a certain reasonable size, I think um, and next to you, the orange shirt. Well, first, I just want to say that uh, we like Mars uh, environment is going to be quite free. And I'm not sure if like you can say, well, you can adapt to that very much. But I mean, the other point that I had was like the whole thing, like, um, where I was wondering if it would be possible to, to have like sperms in your eggs brought in the future because um, to, to avoid the founder effect? Um, yes, um, let, me, let me describe the founder effect. Um, um, there have been communities on Earth where a very small number of people you know, started the community and they, they, some of them have a genetic tendency where a large number of the people 
you know, have some, some genetic tendency that can be traced back to one of just a handful of founders. Um, that's fairly easy to, to counteract now that we can uh, freeze embryos and shit like that. Um, um, getting into the size of the community, um, it's been pretty well studied that um, for, 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 not for modern humans, but, but, but thousands of years ago, um, you would tend to have a, a group of people the size of a village, maybe, maybe 30 to 100 people that made up a village, and you spent most of your time with that group. But then you chose a spouse from within a larger tribe that might be 10 to, to, to 50 villages. Um, and, and, and that helped avoid the, the founder effect, also got some, some cultural you know, um, uh, interchange. Now, now we can have an interesting effect where because of radio and the internet, the Mars culture and Earth culture will be tied together by radio, movies and whatnot, and visitors. And they can also be tied together genetically. So, um, yes? Okay, I don't know if the founder effect really applies because our primary source of population growth is still going to be immigration. Even if you have a colony of a thousand people, I mean, so, so and, and, and it is, I mean, the founder effect is villages that primary sole source of population growth is just, just having kids. And so there's no introduction of genetic variants. Sure. Um, 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 by the way, um, I've been thinking about interstellar spacecraft, where, you know, how many people do you need for social stability and genetic stability on an interstellar spacecraft? So that's another topic for another conference. Uh, let me go to Peter and then the next slide. Uh, I think the slower you grow the economy, sure, it is likely to fail. Inflationary uh, strategy growing very quickly. And if every woman who came to Mars had been impregnated with an with a embryo that came from another set of parents, then the genetic diversity of the group could expand fairly quickly. But uh, that, this business about well, people are too small, they're too small. You've got to get it past that quickly because there's too many things to do for too few people. And to, for, to, to have a mix of talents, a mix of things that you need to do to, to survive on your own, you're going to have to grow that number quickly. Uh, we'll have a yeah, uh, so Peter, I agree, but we need to get up to some critical number of people quickly, uh, either through immigration or or, or or birth. Let me let me go through two more slides because we've been jumping around in topics and, and we need to end soon. Um, so I made a list of equipment and supplies or topics related to equipment and supplies. Um, Okay, um, to raise kids, you need extra of everything. The kids are not that productive for the first, you know, 10 to 20 years of their life. You need extra food, water, you know, habitat, a separate play space, um, different types of food, um, different size pressure suits, clothing. Um, they outgrow their, their suits and their clothes fast. Um, different medical equipment in some cases, educational supplies, you know, crayons and, or the equivalent, which, by the way, could probably, which could be made <laughs> in situ. Um, uh, do kids need pets? You know, and, and, and what pets? Um, uh, toys. Um, um, uh, you can't hug a tilapia. Yeah, yeah, you can't tug a tilapia. I, 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 my favorite pet would be, a, would be a flying squirrel. I really want to see what, how a flying squirrel would glide in 3 eighths gravity. Um, yeah, so, 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 so just a minute. Um, y y presumably you need extra radiation protection because their cells are dividing so fast and they're so sensitive to radiation. Uh, but you really need that for all the fertile adults anyway. And safety equipment, um, you know, childproof airlocks, etc. Now, a lot of these are not that much different than, than specific places on Earth. Okay, and then the last slide is um, ethics. Um, we've already covered a lot of this. Is it ethical to raise a child in a harsh or a new environment or, a, or an unknown environment? Um, we have a long history of doing that. Um, danger, what if the harvests fail, the habitats fail, shipments from Earth don't arrive. Um, medic, uh, media attention back on Earth if, you know, if the base is doomed. 
Um, will the media attention affect the kids' personalities as they grow? You know, how many press interviews will you, are you willing to give to your three-year-old? Um, do they deserve free passage to Earth? You know, you know, is there an inherent right to passage to Earth? Um, um, can they even adapt to 1G? Will they be happy, et cetera? So um, I think that's my last slide, and I would take any comments on any of the slides um, for, and, and let's, let's end in about five minutes. Is that okay? So um, I'll start again on this side. Any, any comments over here? Any topic? Yeah. My name is Brad. Can I get a quick book? Hey, yes, you speak up. Um, I was going to be having a first edition tomorrow in the morning about population all the way through stellar um, settlement, some projections. Okay. And then that's related to this, and I just thought it would be a good thing, but I wanted to. So, so, so let me repeat, Brad Jarvis at 1 o'clock tomorrow, right. a projection of population growth all the way through interstellar. Same here, going to the southern solar system. Right okay. But, um, and this is a good discussion on that, but I had a question about, um, about how many, about the resources, again, we're getting back to the carrying capacity of Mars, the resources that you have. You have the land area, you do have the water supply, Presumably, ultimately, fresh water that you could, you could bring in and use. You're going to be building a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, places for, for people to grow up and live in you know, domes and that sort of thing. So, um, why wouldn't the primary limitation be the, uh, I can see the, the, re the power resource. If you have, have asteroids nearby, we would be able to pretty much um, Pull in everything you needed. That's that's one aspect. But the other one was Chris McKay's talk this morning. He was talking about you know growing an atmosphere and actually being able to bring the uh, bring the, the pressure up and the, the yeah. oxygen partial pressure up within like hundred thousand years. Uh, so and how does how, how do you see that that population uh, ramping up? Right? Uh, so, um, okay. Um, those constraints. Yeah, yeah, you're going far beyond first children, <laughs> but um, but the going to be going to Mars to settle. Right. Um, um, a lot depends on transportation costs and wealth. Um, um, I picture that as long as they, that for a while it will be mostly scientific interest. That, that the major reason to go to Mars will be for science, and and it'll pay, be paid for out of science budgets, and we will have just just a few, you know, you know, a few tens of people going. Um, and at some point, there will be other economic justification. Um, um, maybe people on Earth just want to leave, maybe you know, for religious or escapism reasons. Um, maybe the wealth of people on Earth will just get so 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 large that lots of people can afford a rocket trip. Um, there there may be political uh, reasons to, to go. The the opposite could happen. We could have an economic crash on Earth, and nobody can afford a rocket flight. And and who's ever on Mars just descends from the people already there. You know, maybe you could afford to ship your embryo to Mars. But, um, and um, then once you get up to uh, really self-sufficient communities, thousands of people, then, then it's just whatever growth rate that community has, depending on whether they feel it's ethical to have two kids or three kids, and the limit of their, of their resources within the next few years. But the ultimate carrying capacity is, is what I was referring to earlier, and that's limited by the total resources. But you can always import, you know. You, it, um, oh, oh, another question, thing is, um, we may get, there's some very cheap transportations on their horizons. Um, people have talked about space elevators where for just the cost of the effort to lift you up, you can get into space. That is very iffy. That may never be feasible from a material science point of view. But rotating tethers would be, and for not much more than the cost of a spaceship one flight, getting you up above the atmosphere, you might be able to grab a tether that's rotating and then stay in space. So it's conceivable that the cost of going to Mars might come as low as the cost of the fuel, which would be about one tanker truck full of gasoline. And a lot of people can afford that if you save up, um, plus the rental of the craft and the food and the consumables. So, so there, there's multiple technologies that might get immigration down to be affordable by hundreds of thousands and maybe a few million people. Uh, whether they're interested or not is another question. Um, somebody, 
Any, any comment on anything, any of the slides I've shown? Equipment and supplies for kids? Yes? There's a lot of hope. I want to address one of the other issues. Uh, uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that children can do. There are a lot of things that in the space station, in the station, whatever, uh, that doesn't require an awful lot of, uh, uh, of skill. And uh, uh, as well as being uh, uh, trained by their parent or, or somebody else who's doing something that they want to learn to do, uh, they can, but they can learn to be very skilled and uh, very competent uh, subjects. Yes, yeah, yeah, certainly in, in most societies or, or the older societies, children do an awful lot of help around the house and the farm by age 10 and 12. Especially if there's a need. Yeah. Uh, was another comment over here? Well, I just yes. have a, a question for everybody. If, if, if you had the chance to go to Mars, a one-way trip with no return, would everybody in this room go? Okay, so, so, so I, I, I will rephrase that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so his question is, and I'll rephrase it, if you have a chance to take a one-way trip to Mars, little chance of returning, and assume that there's a settlement there and you have a likelihood... You, you know, yeah, well, let's say it's half and half. Let's say you have a 50% chance of making it Okay. After five years. Or so. Okay. Okay. So, so you have a fifty percent chance of surviving after five years. Who would take a one-way trip? Um, I think about half. Fifty percent chance of having to go back. No, of of of, of, of dying, of, of not making of. No, 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 no. Some people will volunteer for that. <laughs> Yourself, People you die see, climbing you mountains all the time. I want to die. Never quote me the odds. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, but by the way, you know the way to get a uh, a street name for you in is it White Sands, New Mexico? Is 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 take a plane straight down into the desert and die, and then they name a street <laughs> after you. The only exception was somebody got kept control of his airplane, and instead of crashing, he was able to land on the street, and they renamed that street for him. Yeah. So there's only two ways to get streets named for you there. Was there a comment? Yes. yes. I don't think so. Um, the possibilities for dying in mass is going to be 50%. I think uh, the possibility for living right there is 99%. I don't the, think. The, the, the we are, go we are going to, to die, but the regular time, you know? The time yeah. that God is going to take us. But not because we are going to different planets. Um, okay. I am very positive about the project. It, it, um, 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 okay, let me rephrase the question. If you had a very good chance of living out your natural life, who would take a one-way trip? Um, Earth lovers. Okay. Yeah, more than half. Like, of course, we have a selected audience. Which brings up a little point. Yes. Death or Speak up. What about death? You know, you, you have 12 people. Somebody might get accidentally or or are we going to have some sort of a ward or a ground or what's, what's yeah. the Yeah, so the question is, in case of death, are we going to have more or burial ground? By the way, I led a discussion about two years ago about a memorial flower garden where we, you know, bury the people in this flower garden. Well, and, well, 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 my proposal had been that, that you only compost the bodies in the flower garden, <laughs> not, in the, not in the food drops. Uh, by the way, here are, here are four teenagers, older teenagers in, uh, in space, and they're, they're being court-martialed, by the way, for, uh, for, 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 for hot rodding. Uh, does anybody remember that episode? They, they, they were doing some maneuver in their spacecraft around Jupiter. That was, they were, they, they were, I thought they were, uh, I thought they were like in uh, the, uh, they were in college. Like, yeah, yeah, these are Star Trek kids in Starfleet Academy. They're probably about age 20, and they were hot riding in their in their little private spacecraft and uh, and doing an illegal maneuver and having to be court martialed. So, and uh, anyway, one was killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One one of them was killed. It was a squadron of five. Yeah. Four of them got court martialed. Yeah. So, okay, um, I enjoyed it. I hope you did. And. Um, Um, reminder there are other events going on.
non-political action task force. There's a movie being shown tonight, and we are having a discussion and open general get-togethers with Mars Homestead.